<laughs> What's the difference between a cigarette and a cigar? One comes from Cuba. You're I don't smoking know. Smoking a pancake. A, <laughs> yeah, I think I read it on possiblynottrue.com. Like, just put perimeters yeah. and boundaries on it. Just like, like, it should just snow in like places where like people don't <laughs> often go. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Collective Comics and the Lights Comics Action Podcast. We're diving into episode number 28. 28. Here today. We're just coming off of last week's episode, Selling Superman, which was yes. episode 27. Had a great time with Darren and Adam. It was a phenomenal conversation. If you guys haven't checked that out, hop over there and do so. But for now, we're diving into a whole bunch of different stuff happening this week. Getting into it. Right. I'm joined by the homie Jake. The homie. The homie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> How you Hello. doing, man? I'm Hello. Good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Nice. Um, uh, freezing. <laughs> <laughs> freezing? <laughs> freezing. Yeah, I can't I, talk right now, apparently. Oh, I thought but, you were like, it's cold out. It's not cold out. No, it's definitely not cold out. I sh probably shouldn't be wearing a sweatshirt, <laughs> but I'm going to keep the sweatshirt on for I'm now. A, I'm in like shorts and... The weird T-shirt and all kinds of yeah, stuff. You're Man. way more appropriately dressed for the weather than <laughs> I am. Well, we had like it was let's be like Midwestern dads and talk about the weather a little bit, right? It was like I'm a Midwestern dad. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was like it was like 70s, 80s, and then all of a sudden it was like 30 again, and now oh, it's like yeah. 70 again. It's like what? Is, make up your mind. Yeah, I was sweating the other day. I needed all my windows down, the AC on, everything. Right. Couldn't wear a sweatshirt. Walked out the next day without a sweatshirt. Right. Expecting I didn't need it, and it dropped, and I was freezing cold. <laughs> and then the day after that, it started snowing. Yeah, it was snowing for a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. Love but, the Midwest. Yeah. No, I don't. But Nobody does. <laughs> I don't think anybody <laughs> Some does. Some people love it. Some people wish it snowed more. I don't understand those people. I'm I, like... I like the snow. Oh, I can't. I, I like to snowboard. I like to go snowboarding. I like it when, when I want it. Right. But when yeah. I'm stuck in my house and I can't go anywhere because my car is stuck in the driveway. Right. Yeah. Like I'm I'm over it. I wish <laughs> I wish because I think like clean, f fresh snow, like in the the, the woods, real Midwestern. Right. Like that looks that Beautiful. looks nice. Like yeah. that looks very pretty. Absolutely Just like amazing. I wish there was like lines, like don't snow on the road, <laughs> don't snow in driveways, don't snow in my yard. Right. Like just put perimeters and yeah. boundaries on it. Just like, like it should just snow in like places where like people don't <laughs> often go. You know what I mean? Right. You can go to see the snow. Right. Right. <laughs> it's like uh, it's like uh, those snow. You talking about snowboarding? Like they put snow on mountains for snowboarding. Oh yeah, and is they're it, able to keep it till it, like June. Like India or Dubai or somebody or somewhere where they have like an indoor like. Like a mall with like a ski slope inside of it. Oh yeah, they have they have yeah a couple places like that. You can you can keep that like you can have that. Leave the snow out. <laughs> I don't want it outside. Like I don't want it where I'm driving. Right. See, surprisingly, when you go to indoor snowboarding and stuff mm. like that, it's actually surprisingly warm in there. Right. Because it stays about sixty degrees, and somehow they're able to keep that fake snow right all, yeah. like all solid and I'd able admit, to ski on. It's at It's got to be degrees. like an ice rink. There's got to be some like you know like ice rink. You can it can be the middle of summer. You can have an ice rink. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like the floor and stuff. It's got to be something like that. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Oh, yeah, definitely. I hate snow. Moral of the story, I hate snow. <laughs> like that's winter is coming. No, winter is ending. Winter is ending. <laughs> winter yeah. is ending. That, that's like, I don't understand those people either that are like, we have four seasons. Like, no, we have winter, which is cold as hell, and we have summer, which is hot as hell. Oh, yeah. And humid is... It's the most humid time of my life. Right. We have all four seasons, but the problem is in the summer... Oh, it's summer. And in the winter, it's freezing cold. It's right. winter. In the, the fall and the spring, you get all four yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the Midwest. And, That's and the it only problem. lasts like a, maybe a month. Yeah. So so basically from February until like May, yeah. you're getting all four seasons. You're getting snow, thunderstorms. Yep. And 80 degree humid, <laughs> 30 degree cold. Like right. it's just everything in between. And, like I'm a fall guy. Like I love fall, fall guys. I never played fall guys, but um, like I love the fall. Like 
leaves changing cool put your flannel hoodie yeah, on dude. like that's my time it's not snowing it's not freezing bonfire weather and we like never get that it goes straight from like <laughs> 80 degrees and humid as hell to like just freezing yep you know what i mean like there's no way no man we really are doing something weird to the plants out here <laughs> because the other day flowers started sprouting up and the, the trees started getting some oh, yeah, leaves on they them freeze again yep and then it froze uh, so they all died yeah. <laughs> you know it's like what are you doing you can't be tricking us like no, that man yeah. even the trees were convinced that it was starting to be summertime but when i lived in texas it would get to zero degrees down there too people are like it doesn't get it doesn't get cold down south i'm like yeah it does yeah i bet it does <laughs> georgia, georgia early mornings get just as cold and then people are like it's never that hot in wisconsin like mm-hmm. yes it is it gets yeah. 110 and 90 percent right. humidity do me a favor and go out to phoenix go in the middle of the desert at midnight and tell me how cold it <laughs> yeah, is because right. it's yeah. freezing yeah, it's crazy. I mean, when I was in Iraq, it would get to like 120 during the day, and then it would be like I work night shift in Iraq, so I was chilling. Like it would get to like nice 60s. I'm That's like, insane, yes, though. Perfect, perfect. That's insane. That's double. Yeah, I mean, we don't hit 120 degrees here. I mean, we get we, close. we can't we get we with can humidity get close with humidity. Bit. I bet we do. Probably what it, the real feel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the real feel <laughs> yeah, on yeah. the iPhone. Because I mean, we definitely get to like a 105. <laughs> Oh, we've gotten there. We've gotten yeah. there, but not too too far we, past. We, cons- we constantly sit mm-hmm. at like ninety five to one hundred. Ninety five to one hundred, I feel like is is pretty yeah. safe in the summertime. That, that's hot. That's a hot summer for us. And then you touch your seatbelt. Oh, <laughs> oh, dude! You burn. get some third degree Ooh. burns from from that metal seatbelt, uh, dude. Yeah. I w- I never wanted leather seats like ever because of that. Because they get so hot and so cold, you know what I mean. The cold part is the issue that I have. Oh, the, the, I, the heat isn't isn't too big of a problem for me, but it, no, the cold no, part no. of trying to sit in a cold leather seat—it's like trying to get in a cold bathtub. You ever I, like I, sit down in the shower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've taken ice baths before and stuff. Oh, dude, no way. Yeah, like <laughs> when I was playing football in high school, I took ice bath. I remember the ice challenge, and I was going around my whole. I just filled a bathtub with ice and got mm. into it. It was freezing. Dang. I was actually because there's a bunch of like medical benefits and stuff from like cold water. I was thinking about doing it like once a week, like 15 minutes in an ice bath, mm-hmm. just to just to free up my muscles and yeah. stuff. I, I see all these like different health benefits and I hear it's like a, a major like uh, mental benefit too yeah. because it's basically like kind of the same mental strain that the gym kind of puts on right, you. Right, right. You know, that, that entire time you're there, your body is telling you stop stop don't do this you know i don't mm-hmm. i don't want to keep doing this i don't feel good it's freezing cold get out you know but the fact that you can get through that 15 minutes or 20 minutes or an entire workout you know you're just constantly pushing yourself and i guess that like um kind of helps you like evolve yeah. as a human is what i'm what i'm starting to see from it so was... it's gotten me interested to where the point where i've almost wanted to try it yeah yeah but yeah it's just so cold dude i can't i'm weak <laughs> i'm weak <laughs> well there's like all this like cryotherapy and stuff too now um, oh yeah uh chris hemsworth did a show on disney plus where he was doing like crazy extremes of all these things like extremes of fasting extremes of uh cold water extremes of like strength and stuff like that i mean he was he had an issue during it and ended up running into Thor time and then had to do it like a strength test with body weight mm-hmm. post Thor instead of before Thor. So he had put on a bunch of Thor muscle Yeah, and it was, it seemed horrible, but yeah, like it's, it was fascinating to watch. And like the end of it, the last episode dives into like dealing with aging and death. And it's just like a weird, it like makes you think and like, I've done some of these things, but not to the extreme that he did. But right. it, is, it is like, it's like the adrenaline rush. You know what I mean? It's like when you do something that like kind of scares the crap out of you, but then you're like, oh, I want to do it again for some reason. You know right. what I mean? It's kind of like one of those things I feel like with like, uh, like ice baths and stuff. Mm-hmm. Just putting yourself in those uncomfortable situations that you wouldn't normally do. And it just, you come out the other side yeah. a better person yeah from it, you and know? and you just feel that rush of like uh like i just did that like yeah i didn't think I, it was possible you know what yeah, I mean? it's almost like yeah. it reminds me a lot of a uh, speech class in high school to where you would go up to give your speech <laughs> yeah. that you're like dude this is gonna suck it's gonna bomb and then you go up and kill it and then you're like okay now i almost want to go back and do it again right you yeah. know you kind of broke that boundary you were so afraid to get up there and speak in front of the whole class but everybody enjoyed it and you you had a, a, a nice reaction right. from it that uh 
you just want to keep doing it. You're like, okay, this this isn't nearly as bad as what I thought it is. Yeah. You know, your mind a lot of times will automatically go to the worst possible scenario, and that's going to immediately stop you from doing anything. I find myself doing that a lot. That's <laughs> you know, like, and I'm just like, like the polar stores. plunge. Like, I always kind of wanted to do the polar plunge. Oh, gosh, I guess, yeah. I guess I kind of done it in unintentionally a few times. Right. But, <laughs> but, like... Uh, Not for... Because it's for charity, I believe, right? I don't know how... It depends. Like, they do one back home, and they cut a hole in the lake, and everybody jumps in and whatever. But I don't know. I just kind of want to do it. You know what right. I mean? I just kind of want to do it. Yeah, I think I like the uh, the motives and stuff behind it a lot of time. Most of the time, they're kind of going to to charities right. and and uh, doing it for some kind of foundation. You know, jumping in a lake isn't easy, but when you're doing it for, for <laughs> right. something like that, you'd be like, my life could be a whole lot harder right now. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, Collective Comics Polar Plunge. There we go. 2024. <laughs> let's do it. We'll set up an event right now. 2024. Let's do it on my birthday, July 23rd. What? <laughs> you can't. 2024. How are you going to do a polar plunge on your birthday in July? We got it, dude. We're all going to go to Antarctica. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll be uh, all right. We got it. Just the journey there sounds yeah horrible enough. <laughs> I don't know. I, there's probably somewhere we can think of. <laughs> right. Like a bathtub <laughs> with ice in it. We'll just... No, dude. We'll, we'll do it in Lake Michigan. How about that? We'll do it Lake Michigan. Well, Lake Michigan's always cold, though. Yeah, Why but, is but like going Michigan, in? Yeah. Imagine doing it like New Year's Eve or something, going into 24. But you 24. said your birthday. It's July. Well, yeah, but now I'm thinking like maybe that's actually not so possible. <laughs> but... <laughs> I don't know. I, sometimes m- words come out of my mouth faster than I can even like register them in my head, and like that's what happens. Also, it's not July yet. Like we could do this on your birthday this year if that was. Yeah, but we want to make this real big. Oh, right? okay. You it's know? huge. Yeah. It's gigantic. It's massive. It's Hulk sized. <laughs> yeah, Hulk sized. <laughs> the Hulk sized polar plunge. Yeah. We just get. 30,000 people to jump in the, the lake all at once <laughs> and raise 000. raise the elevation yeah. of the water levels start flooding the streets of Chicago. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you could almost do a polar plunge at any point of time. At what? Yeah, in Lake Michigan. In like, Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan is always cold. Why is it it's always, always cold? It is always freezing. I mean, I guess it is a big there's a lot of water in the Great Lakes yeah. to warm up. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but that's I'm. It's pretty much the biggest body of of water that's a fresh lake. I'm pretty sure something like, like that. I don't know. I don't think anything gets that big. It's practically an ocean. It so. is. It is the biggest. Yeah, don't yeah. fact check us. It is. It is definitely the biggest <laughs> freshwater thing. I don't know. It's it's one of them for it, sure. It's so gotta it's, it's got to take. A I hot mean, there's minute. five lakes. They're all connected. Mm-mm. It's got to take a hot minute for it to to warm up, especially because it's way up north, and it yeah. goes into Canada. Yeah, you can take Lake Michigan right into Canada, so I'm pretty sure they get pretty cold up there. Yeah, you gotta you gotta keep it moving, keep it moving. The 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 Niagara Falls are a natural aerator. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Some stuff we heard on Google when we were 12, you know. Oh man! But speaking of a Hulk size polar plunge, let's jump into a little bit of news that. Because I didn't know about this, and I guess it's been going on for about a month now, that there's talk about Disney selling their shares in Hulu to regain control of Hulk and Namor. Namor water, Hulk, massive. We've just connected all there of it everything there's that the, we just talked about. There's the Hulk there's segue. plunge. Right? Yeah. Namor, the Namor, the Hulk size Namor plunge. Right. <laughs> That's what we should do. 2024, come into a ice block near you right (laughs) (laughs) um but so yeah i feel like you might know a little bit more about this than i do yeah so i i had uh i'm not saying that i know more about it than you do but um i I texted you the other day Mm -hmm. and i was like yo new hulk trailer just in a couple question marks you know and because i had gotten this notification on my phone that said new hulk trailer watch now you know and everything so i clicked it it's it was clickbait Mm-hmm. But basically, um, what the comic community is starting to do and what the fans are starting to do is kind of connect the dots between um, Disney selling their shares in Hulu. And what this is going to do when they sell their shares in Hulu, I guess, um, is that it's going to somehow release the distribution rights for the Hulk. It sounds like some kind of trade. It sounds like some kind of trade to Universal is what I understood from a little bit of an article. that yeah. I. A lot of people are speculating that, that what's going to happen is that Disney is going to sell their stocks in Hulu and that Universal is going to basically buy Disney stocks right. 
in Hulu because they own, I believe they own 25% of Hulu. I th- I read 67. Is it 67? I, it was it was something it, along that. Yeah. It could have been 25 shares is what I'm. Yeah, I don't know. Wh- wh- I don't however, know what that it was, breaks down. That gets a little too yeah. businessy for me. If you want the numbers, find them yourself. Yeah, go, <laughs> go ahead and find them. They're, they're there. Uh, I don't know what, what the stocks are going to sell for, but they, they, they own a, a, a pretty big percentage. Yeah, in, that's, in why, Hulu. that's why like you can get like a Hulu, Hulu Disney Plus package. So I'd mm-hmm. imagine that's going away if this happens. Probably. Um, I think Verizon owns some stocks too. That's why you can get discounts on Disney Plus and Hulu or Hulu through Verizon if you have their phone. But yeah, this sounds like some kind of trade between some kind of trade between Universal and Disney to basically trade Hulu for Namor and Hulk is what I understand. Yeah. So somehow within this deal, it's releasing those because they can't be. In their own titles. Yeah. They can't be in their own movies. Not since... We haven't seen that since 2008 with the Hulk. And that's the one that Universal did. Um, The cool thing is that a lot of people... What they're speculating is that they're going to make a Hulk 2 Mm -hmm. and tie it in to the 2008 one at the same time still tying it in to the Bruce Banner that we currently have. Okay. That was kind of something that I was wondering about because I was under the impression that... Mark Ruffalo's kind of on his way out, so mm-hmm. this news coming would, you know, I I guess that's that's my interpretation of everything going on around the Marvel universe is that Bruce Banner is on his way out. It could mm-hmm. not be true, um, but if he was, do we get a new Hulk with this? Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm wondering too, because what 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 people are speculating on again this is all speculation right. this isn't an official statement from disney or from marvel right. or f- from any of these guys this is pure fan speculation on what could now possibly happen because i mean yeah i think i read it on possibly not true.com <laughs> right? i can't i don't even know if that's no, a real website no, but it that probably is. is it has to be if it's not like i just want to start it just start spreading rumors <laughs> we have to man like possibly not true.com <laughs> right oh my god we'll, we'll have to check it before this, this episode comes out you said it with such confidence right. it sounded so real i was like what <laughs> people are like that's fake news i'm like yeah literally is possibly not true <laughs> right? like, you're you're getting your your source is not not and a good one right like you should you should you should cite wikipedia on your term paper before possibly right. not accurate.com <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but this is getting blown into you know the stratosphere if you were to say yeah. because the you know not we know that this could release the hulk and name more so this could give us uh Finally seeing Hulk again in a, in a solo movie, mm-hmm. another Hulk story, which is great, which is, I think, what we need, especially after, my opinion, the utter, utter failure of She-Hulk yeah. and, and what they were trying to do, because this is going to be able to start bridging some of those things that they couldn't do at that time because of these distribution rights and stuff like that. Right. Like, with this, we could get that movie where Hulk was going to get Scar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that makes sense now. Yeah, we it would free up storylines around like a World War Hulk idea. It would, 100%. you know what I mean, like, and Else Worlds and stuff like that as well. Yeah, it it would, it would be really cool to have that freedom to move around Hulk. Oh yeah, in a be- way better way. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. right now he, everybody knows Hulk, so he's not. He is automatically a main character mm-hmm. of anything like he was barely in she hulk but still it's like hulk 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 you know what i mean yeah. like everybody wants hulk even with the avengers the big team ups and stuff like hulk is never in the forefront because they can't do anything with that you know what i mean so mm-hmm. having that freedom to move around would be super cool oh yeah and and one of the things that a lot of people are starting to to kind of connect the dots on on, on how they are going to do this. Because the first thing in my head, I was like, that wouldn't make any sense if they were going to try to connect the 2008 Hulk to Avengers and Mark Ruffalo mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Because I'm like, realistically, they're almost two different Bruce Banners. Yeah. Um, 
the one in 2008 was almost kind of fighting with, with you know, when he became the Hulk, he didn't remember anything. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't, um, he was almost like, you know, when somebody has a seizure, they don't remember the seizure and, and stuff like that. That type of thing was happening to him that he didn't remember the actions that he was doing while he was the Hulk. He couldn't control them, yada, yada, yada. But towards the end of the movie, with, of course, the love of his life and stuff like that, he's able to start focusing in and kind of remember certain things here. I don't know necessarily about remember, but able yeah. to control it. Um, to where, of course, Mark Ruffalo couldn't control it at first, but kind of revealed it in the first Avengers, you know, that he's always angry and that, you know, he's 100% coherent at yeah. that point. I think I think they did a really good job in She-Hulk where, like, explaining, like... Because he was like talking to She-Hulk and he's like, it took me forever to understand and get yeah. to this point. And, you know, I think they they did a good job at explaining like why he's so good at it now. And, you know, that was that was a cool explanation that came out of She-Hulk. But but now apparently we're supposed to see it is what people say. That would be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it the the early the edward norton hulk was Mm -hmm. so much darker too you know it it was just a lot darker and i don't know i don't know i'm here for dark stuff i like the dc stuff dark Mm -hmm. but like i don't know is it like the the success of superman where like all these marvel stuff that's not from marvel studios is so dark like like that Hulk was so dark. All the Venom stuff is so dark. Like everything is so dark. It almost feels like, it almost feels like, uh, like a, like a one-off like DC. You know what I mean? It's like, Mm -hmm. it's like they tried to do DC with Marvel characters and didn't really hit the, well, that's kind of what Marvel was doing. Even in the comics, uh, you know, back in the the sixties and the seventies and stuff. Cause at that point in time, DC was the winner and they got dark Mm -hmm. and they were really getting dark. Um, to where Marvel and Stan Lee specifically started not making it so much about what is happening and like yeah. like the stuff that Batman does is dark and, mm. and why he does it those are that's that's dark. Um, they started focusing on like the broken life of of Peter Parker and and making that part of it super dark. But when he's a hero, he's forget forget the rest of it. Yeah. You know, knight in sh- shining armor. And I think that that. Um, is what they were trying to do with the movies because, of course, that is a lot of people's most interesting part of their stories or why they fall in love with Peter Parker or Miles Morales or whoever they might fall in love with Mm -hmm. as a character that um, they have, you know, they have to... They were trying to portray those in the movies, I guess you you, you can say, but it was almost like it was too much and too geared towards what DC was doing. And yeah. it almost Marvel's supposed to be dark, but only a certain part. Only a certain right. only yeah, a certain yeah. shade of blue if if that makes sense. Well, I guess that goes back to to like the whole Frank Miller era. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because they Marvel brought on Frank Miller and then you get these dark daredevil that blew up and were super cool. Mm-hmm. Which like but that's because he was writing Dark Knight. Well, he wrote Dark Knight after. Was it? Yeah, I was like, I don't remember if it's they, after or before. Where like that's the Defender series, like the whole Netflix thing, super dark. But I mm-hmm. feel like that fits so much that like that like New York City, like I don't know. It just feels like it. Obviously, Daredevil, super dark mm-hmm. in the comics. I feel like well, Luke Cage solo stuff obviously wasn't, but Jessica Jones came in like marvel max or whatever it was with the that oh, dark time yeah, yeah. and they were trying to kind of do like an nc-17 like not for children comic with jessica jones so that makes sense to be dark because they were like a lot more there's a lot more sexualization and mm-hmm. murder and he was she was an investigator like mm-hmm. you know stuff like that when did this come out again i forget i think it was the 80s or the 90s that's what i was gonna say because around then is when people started realizing like Comics aren't made for kids. Yeah, like, like yes. Well, that's when the Superman Jessica Jones first, stuff. When yeah. did when did Frank Miller write? Was that the eighties? It had it had to be, been because the, the Dark Knight came came out right the end of the eighties into the nineties, and yeah. that, that was that whole Dark Knight 
era and time was the 80s and the 90s and Killing Joke was before right before that and stuff like it. Right, because that was Frank Miller came on and basically rewrote um, Daredevil into more of like basically what we know Daredevil is now. Like, yeah, if you watch the show the like with Stick and his father's origin and the suit that we know, like that's mostly Frank Miller's doing, mm -hmm. you know, wrote, he created Electra, you know, all that stuff. And then uh, when he was kind of done with that for a while, DC was like, hey, we like that dark stuff you're doing. Can you write? And he wrote Dark Knight right after that. So I'd imagine like coming off the 80s, you know, we get Batman 89, which is a very dark. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And then we go into the 90s and we're like, I guess they would probably be like, dark stuff is huge right now. And I mean, I it really was because this was also a point in time where Batman was known to not kill. Mm -hmm. And Michael Keaton was killing bad guys mm -hmm. in Batman 89. Right, right. And then I always, the Venom stuff, even the Venom stuff coming up now feels like it should have been like around the Tobey Maguire time period to yeah. me. Like, it doesn't feel modern to me for some reason. I don't know if it's supposed to or not supposed to, but, like, it almost feels like Sony... I feel like Sony's stuck there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I want to see something that feels new and exciting to me. You know, yeah, and that, that's... I feel like that's also a common problem. Even with Disney at this point, I was w uh, watching uh, Kevin Smith's mm -hmm. podcast, um, and he was saying... Because he owns a, a movie theater, and he likes to reshow old movies mm -hmm. like from the 80s like he's showing the goonies and beetlejuice oh, and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that cool stuff you know um and he's actually doing a very great job and being very successful at it but um apparently they have an issue with disney disney will not let them play anything from the past if it's not currently coming out or mm -hmm. going to come out they don't care about it yeah you I know mean. as to where Sony's on the other spectrum to where this worked back then. <laughs> it's going to it. work yeah. now. <laughs> right. That's absolutely not the fact. Just because our attention spans back then was probably 10 minutes, and now it's two. Well, back in the 80s, I feel like... Well, I'm saying I'm, Toby. I'm, Toby. Oh, Toby. Toby era. Sony and Toby. I feel like it was longer than 10 minutes. I feel like 10 minutes was probably like the 2010s. And, yeah, and we yeah. just drastically declined <laughs> since then. Yeah, you know, and th but yeah. that's that's kind of what I, what I'm yeah. trying to say is that it, as time goes on, our attention spans are getting shorter and shorter because of all the short term content. That's just how we digest things real yeah. fast. We want it now. That's just how it, how it rolls. Um, and it, and it's you know, Sony doesn't want to do that, right? Clearly, because if they're still making Venom, well, I I don't know. Like, I feel like there's such. I want to see I want to see Marvel Studios do Venom. I just Me too. like I want to see it. I want to I want to be able to AB them, you know what I mean? And there's inevitably there's going to be things about the Disney Disney Marvel Studios that we mm -hmm. don't like and there's going to obviously there's things about Venom that I do like, mm -hmm. like the Sony Venom. I don't necessarily like, I wouldn't necessarily call it a bad movie by any means. Yeah. Did it reach what it could have been if it was a Marvel movie or part of the MCU. Right. No, it didn't. Not at all. Not by half. I yeah, feel like yeah, realistically. I feel like like, Cause there's 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 really nothing in, in those movies that stick out to me at this point other than oh cool I saw Venom. Right. The yeah, Venom, exactly. The Venom that I see more in my head as the iconic Venom was Topher Grace. Okay. In in, in Toby's mm -hmm. Spider Man three. Right. That's the Venom that I picture is more iconic in my head still, you know, and now, you know, I want to see something better right, than yeah. what we saw in that one. I thought it was a good looking Venom. Some people might disagree. I think for the time that it was, it was, I thought it was a cool movie when yeah. I remember seeing it in theaters and like, a, like I said, I was very young. I think I'm just, I like Venom a lot and I love Tom Hardy and it just like, I feel like with those two ingredients alone, I feel like I should like these movies more. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. That's that's definitely a me thing. And but I, it also seems like it also seems like a popular opinion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It it doesn't seem like these Venom movies are are hitting ex 
as big as I feel like they should be. Yeah. No, not at you all. I mean, I mean, I just said it. You said it. Yeah. A lot of other people have said it. Um, but like I said, there are things that are super cool about them. I do like things about them. Oh, yeah. I, I do think the Venom looks cool. And the, the part where like Tom Hardy's like jumping and the, the symbiote's like grabbing. Yeah. And, like, they're, they're or even s- Carnage. Yeah. Carnage, the, the first point that we saw Carnage on the screen. Or what was the what was the first villain? The gray one? Or I don't remember. But when they're like jumping at each other and the human is like coming out and the symbiote is like swallow like there's cool imagery there's cool things oh, yeah. like but it just like as like a package it just something something's off to me mm. but definitely wasn't the lethal protector story <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. we got from todd mcfarland back in the day i was watching something recently and todd mcfarland was saying he remembers the first time that he saw topher grace as venom and it was the first time that anybody is seeing venom on the screen mm-hmm. in a movie for the first time ever. Nobody's done anything but draw him up to that point. So Todd McFarlane being the first person to ever draw Venom, of course, was there to see it and yeah. kinda he was saying that he wasn't happy with it because it the way that he drew Venom in the comics, Venom is massive. Right. And right. he is so much massively bigger than Eddie Brock mm-hmm. is. And the problem that he had with it was that he was watching it take him over and take him over and that it, it got his heart racing, take him over. And then he was waiting for him to grow, waiting for him to grow. And before he knew it, it was all wrapped in his face. His teeth were out and he didn't grow. And I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess so. When you look at it like that. But when I was a kid, I was just like, oh my gosh, you know, right. like, what is, what is that thing? <laughs> I do feel like the, the new one is, oh, bigger. he's massive. Like, it's cool. T- Todd had a say in that one after, really? after Topher. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how can you not? You can't, yeah. like, you can't, the guy that pretty much, he might not have created the idea of the symbiote and Venom, but he created what Venom looks like, what Venom does. And if it wasn't for Todd McFarlane, Venom would not be the character he is. Mm-hmm. You know, he, right, he, right. he made up all physicality in that character. So when somebody tells you, the creator of it tells you, you're doing it wrong, <laughs> yeah. maybe you should <laughs> listen. <laughs> be like, uh, guys... Bigger. Yeah. Maybe maybe Just read bigger. the maybe read the comic book and realize he's an alien. Right. Yeah. But the one thing that he did say on, on that, I'm, I'll throw one more thing in there, is that when he was first drawing uh, the Venom symbiote, he knew that it was an alien symbiote. He didn't know Eddie Brock was supposed to be in it, so that's why he accidentally drew Venom so big. Oh really? Yeah. He, so it, the reason why Venom's so big is an accident, but he he still feels like it wouldn't be the same Venom if he's like if I would have known that this is supposed to be covering somebody and that it's somebody else instead of a suit and that this isn't this big alien creature, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have drawn him like that. I mean, I think it's dope, though. That's what I do, too. I think the story behind it, knowing that, like, oh, there was a missing part of the Venom story when creating Venom that made Venom this big, and if that part was in there and it wasn't missing and he got told everything, Venom wouldn't be... yeah. I th- Anything. I think it's better that they didn't. He didn't know. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. It's so cool. A hundred percent. And now we're getting a Lethal Protector number two, coming back out twenty yes, years yes. later. I do. After all this talking about movies, I want to know what's your favorite superhero movie. You have to pick one. Just one. Just one. I'll give you an honorable mention. You can have an honorable mention, but I I, I just want to know one. Oh gosh, dude! <laughs> you can't. You can't. I, I was really curious to see if this would be easy for you. No, it's not or at very all. Very difficult. Like, it is very, very. Like in my head, I feel like you're between two, but I don't know if that's true or not. Do you know what two it is? Batman eighty nine <laughs> and Tobey Maguire oh. Spider Man one. Yeah, are uh, those the two? No, oh, Batman okay. eighty nine, and, and the only reason is because you made me pick one and gave me one honorable mention in Batman Returns. Oh, okay. Both of the posters yeah, that yeah, are right yeah. behind me if anybody can see okay. them. Um, because I used to, when I was a child, I saw Grease 2 for the first time and I had a crush on Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay. So then I saw her as Catwoman and I was Grease like, two. that's cool. Yeah, Grease 2 got me into, into Catwoman and Michelle Pfeiffer. And uh, I, how do you not love Jack Nicholson? That oh, was, yeah, Jack Nicholson's great. You're gonna make me choose between those? I I don't I can't choose between those. That's the problem. Okay. Is be, I feel like because, that's that's fair enough. Because we have the penguin, we have um Catwoman. Right. 
Uh, and then and then you have uh, what's his name now? Uh, of course, I'm not. I'm gonna forget it. Shrek. Oh, uh, Mike Myers. No, Mike Myers isn't in that. Oh, Christopher Walken. Yeah, Christopher Walken. Where does that come into Shrek? His last name is Shrek. Christopher Walken in the movie. Oh, yeah. oh, I was like so confused. <laughs> You're like, well, I'm like, no, like the Mike guy, Myers the bear. is not in this <laughs> movie. <laughs> <laughs> Does Batman make pancakes? I don't really know what's happening. I'm making, isn't it waffles? I'm making waffles. Yeah, waffles. <laughs> and in the morning, I'm making waffles. What's the difference between waffles and pancakes? Uh, the grit in them. <laughs> that's it, right? Yeah, just the the impression Waff- that's left in them. Waffles are crispy pancakes. I think make one, me one changed my from, mind. Right, one comes from Belgium. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the difference between a cigarette and a cigar? One comes from Cuba. You're I don't smoking know. a pancake. There's a, lot, there's a lot of differences between right. a lot of these things. But really, but, like pancakes, waffles are crispy pancakes, right? Change my mind. Can you change my mind? I don't think anybody can. Probably Leave not. it in the comments if you can change <laughs> right. my mind. <laughs> but yeah, two movies. If I had to pick, but realistically, between those. I'd have to probably pick Batman Returns because it has Danny DeVito as a penguin. Yeah. Pfeiffer. It, 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 the cast made that one better for me, and I feel like I catch myself mm-hmm. watching that one more. Um, but if I had to pick one that's not an honorable mention, it like or that's not Batman, okay. and that's you know, yeah, not part of those two it would definitely be Toby. Okay. The, fir- yeah, the yeah, first yeah. Toby. So, yeah, pretty much, yeah. But those two are the first ones that ever come to my mind, and I'm like, oh, boy. What is what is your top? I don't know. <laughs> top one. What's your favorite one? That's See, it. here's the pressure now. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I, I thought about this question earlier, and I was thinking about it, and I really don't know. Like, Civil War, like, oh, that's yeah. such a good movie to me because, like, we got Spider-Man back. Like, we got spider-man in the avengers in that movie yeah. um ant-man came out and he like acting like that and we get like the f- the real first like them butting heads mm-hmm. in like the current mcu um but i mean i do like batman 89 i like the the other batmans with like the jim carrey riddler yes you know like yeah. there's so many um i, I really like the current spider-man franchise like i think they're doing really cool oh, stuff yeah. um, it's almost like that's where all the energy and effort is going to like black panther movies so good yeah spider-man is though yeah <laughs> i don't like i don't know i feel like it's hard for me to tell you like what my favorite is mm-hmm. but like it's easy for you to it's easy for me to be like i don't really like that one so how do you judge your favorite I don't know. Because I guess I, that, that, that also kind of plays into factor here. Because, like, when I was just thinking about my favorite, I didn't even think past 2010. But, yeah, well, I mean, you you were, like, out of the Marvel movies for a while. Like, I feel like you watched them here and there, but you weren't, like, a big, like, a lot of people that we talk about. Mm-hmm. Like, you had that time away from Marvel movies. 100%. Um, but I feel like, I, I feel like it has to make me feel something. You know what I mean? And, like... With Civil War, like, that was, like, the Spider-Man, Ant-Man, like, I'm pretty sure Black Panther was in that one, too, wasn't he? Or was he not? But, like, those, those, like, coming in were, like, a big deal for me at that time. Because, like, all that stuff going around about, like, we're never going to get Spider-Man in the Avengers now because the ownership and this and that. And then we're like, we got Spider-Man in the movie. That's dope. Like, um, but also, like, Christian Bale, Dark Knight, like... That will forever be like a uh, staple. Like, yeah, it's, it's got to be. Mm-hmm. I feel like, and I feel like it's weird too because I didn't really care too much for the first one, and I the third one was all right to me. But like that Dark Knight with Heath Ledger, like that he, whole thing surrounding it. I I don't know. I think that might have to be the number one for me. There you go. Like, yeah, that's that's a that's a great one, man. I remember that coming out and just being like, "This is crazy." Right. And then hearing that, like that second or like third quarter of the movie is like not him; it's CG'd and the, yeah. the part when he's hanging off the building and everything. I'm like, that's nuts. That was really pushing the boundary at the time for that, and you still can't tell. Yeah, I, mean, I still can't tell which which one is not him. That opening scene too, the bank heist, it was so good. It was like so perfect, and you're like, you uh, followed him the whole time, and you didn't even know. You, well, you were. I I feel like you were like, 
All right, this is the jo- this one's the Joker. He's gonna turn on him. Oh, this one's the Joker. He's gonna turn. Oh, this one is the Joker. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And even when I know that that's what happens, right. I'm almost like the Joker just sent these dudes all here. They all are, are there. You know, almost not even. You know, yeah. and then it's the Joker there. I'm like, of course he's not that dumb. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> Why would he share with anybody? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Like- well, yeah, because I mean, the first time watching it, you're like. Oh, this is just a bunch of his henchmen. He's gonna, they're gonna deliver it to him. You know yeah. what I mean? And then it starts to like unfold. ride out, yeah, unfold, and you're like, the Joker's probably here. The Joker, yeah. yeah oh, the Joker's the only one leaving. Yeah, and he's, <laughs> he's the only one driving the bus. Right, somehow in the middle of the, yeah. the hey. school traffic, which like, how do you plan that out? The Joker is crazy but smart at the same time. That, that's why. That's why the Joker's so good because. He's so smart, but also so crazy. Yep. You know what I mean? Like you can't mess with him. You can't touch him. Right. You know, that brings me that that brings us up. My dad was telling me the story of how his buddy had to change his tire at work. And as he's changing his tire, he kicked the hubcap and all four of his lug nuts went down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> and this whole time that he's trying to change his tire or like, and, and then he starts freaking out. Uh, I guess this guy starts yelling at him from out of window. Hey, hey, and they're next to an, an asylum or I don't know oh, okay. what else yeah, to yeah, call yeah, yeah. you know, but the, the, he, he felt very uncomfortable there and was like, I'm not going to acknowledge any of that. Mm-hmm. You know, what's getting yelled at me right now because he knows what could put, potentially happen. But He's yelling at him, hey, 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 finally gets his attention. What? And he goes, grab a grab a lug nut off of each tire and put it on one. The dude didn't even think. He thought that he was screwed. Like, yeah. Grab a lug one lug nut off of each tire and you'll be able to get your way. Yeah, uh, yeah, because uh, then you'll have three on every one. It's not yeah. not highly recommended, but definitely a simple solution in the yeah. time. Yeah. But, the, but that's crazy, yeah. He looks at the guy, and he just like gives him this look like, how come you figured that out and I couldn't figure it out? He goes, I'm crazy. I'm not stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Like, what? <laughs> that's the Joker. Yeah, yeah. Right there. He met the Joker. Well, but, <laughs> you know. Your your dad's friend also didn't know he planted a car bomb under it. Well, he's <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> that's the shit the Joker but, does. Yeah, yeah, no, I guess he was he was in his room, but yelling out of the window. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's how that that ended up. Happening. It was from a far, di- yeah, a yeah. Bit of a far I mean, distance. But that's the kind of like this dude is crazy smart. Yeah. Literally, I mean, isn't that one of the common things that like people who are so intelligent that they are crazy you know what i mean mm-hmm. like that's like a beautiful i'm thinking of a beautiful mind like it's okay. schizoph- not crazy i don't think i feel yeah, like crazy is a word for the joker not everybody else yes yes uh, but like he was he was so intelligent so smart he had like all of these things going for him but his schizophrenia got him in the end and it was like all this intellect and all these things but yeah like i feel like i feel like the joker is that to a thousand you know what i mean yeah you take (laughs) for somebody that's too smart for their own good yeah you take you take smarts and turn them up you take the other issues and turn them up but now you get the joker yeah and then you take common sense and just turn it all the way down and you're done (laughs) yeah you don't need that (laughs) he's got it but just enough to somehow perfectly pull into school bus nobody notices all the debris from the bank man yeah what an incredible movie um, I feel like when I judge my favorites, I kind of automatically think back to how many times did I put this movie on to fall asleep to, mm-hmm. you know, it, you know, or like, that's what I almost like, that's how I know that movie's my favorite movie. You right. know, like if I've, you know, if I'm okay with for a week straight coming home and falling asleep to Batman Returns every night, right. you know, or something like that, or if I'm okay with doing that, then that's probably one of my favorite movies. Very few have done that. The Dark Knight is one of them. Dark Knight for sure. I've yeah. done that too. Um, Toby, of course. Uh, and then the first Avengers. Um, and I guess that's like in order, top five. Right. <laughs> you know, pretty much. First Avengers and then the Iron Man. The first two Iron Man were my favorite. The third one was iffy. I didn't like the Iron Man movies. I loved the first one. The first one was really I didn't like, good. I don't. 
I don't really like the Captain America movies either. But. That's funny because I just watched that the other day and I kind of fell in love and went down this right. whole Captain America rabbit hole. But that was a whole nother like I was getting into that and war propaganda and stuff like that from I, back then. I just feel like I uh, uh Captain America is just a dude with a shield. <laughs> like, well, uh, uh, as Tony Stark said, everything that's special about you came out of a bottle. <laughs> like, I mean. <laughs> There's a lot of you. You could say a lot of these things about like, uh, like uh, Wolverine was injected with stuff. Deadpool was injected with stuff. Yeah. Blah blah all this stuff. But like, at the end of the day, like they still have like powers. You yeah. know what I mean? Where like Captain America, it's just a guy who probably could have done the same thing, lifting some weights and eating some protein. You know right. what I mean? like, <laughs> like you injected this dude with stuff that gave him muscles. You just gave this dude steroids. Like, Watch Captain America again, and you'll be like, okay, that's a lot more than just what you could do in the gym. But because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was kind of thinking the same. I mean, I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, what's he was really special. He was about tiny, him? tiny, but like, yeah, <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> they, 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 they CG his head on a tiny body. Talk about talk about <laughs> the rock and uh black Adam, but um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. A rich guy with gadgets, like I think Batman's such a better rich guy with gadgets. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Prove me wrong, put it in the comments. <laughs> I'll prove you wrong. If I'm but. wrong, then I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's gonna have passionate passionate feelings towards one or the other and right. Hey, let me let me hear it cuz I'm I'm ready to be persuaded. Right. But um talking about Batman villains and the Joker, we can get into the Riddler who is also a very intelligent yeah. Batman villain and he's how, always keeping Batman on his toes. And how Paul Dano is writing an origin story to his Batman character. Yep, we're getting into a little bit of uh, a precursor to our poll list this week with uh, the Riddler Year One. I believe this is going to be issue number four that is coming out this week. Uh, I, to my knowledge, um, this is he's Paul Dano played the Riddler in the Batman with Robert Pattinson, mm-hmm. and now he's of course writing this book, but he's writing an origin story to his Riddler to that movie. Mm-hmm. Which you know the this whole argument has been happening this whole time to where is is the Batman canon? Is it now? No, I mean, is it now? DC, DC has put it out or like the whole James Gunn. It's not canon. Well, it's not canon. It's not to canon the to to like main universe storylines to the movies. Yes. Right. Yeah. But now it's canon to the comics. This could have just been any story that I mean, you pulled from from any source of, you, of whatever. You get this before too. I mean, I guess the comics would be canon until the movie at this point. Mm-hmm. But I mean, even even Harley Quinn wasn't she? She first appeared on screen and was written into comics, was she not? I'm pretty sure she was. I'm. I thought that she made like one or two appearances in the comics, then got way more of a main part in the animated series, which brought her. Out and yeah, we'll have the to. Story. We'll have to double check on that one because I'm pretty. Mm-hmm. I was under the impression that she was one of those characters that came on screen first. Um, but that being said, he is. I love the the Riddler. I like that little twist on the Riddler in the Batman, mm-hmm. and I I often thought like the because I think the Riddler already has like two or three origin stories. And none of them really fit with that. You know what I mean? It doesn't fit with, let alone his Riddler, but I don't think it fits with like a modern Riddler, a modern take on the Riddler at all. You know what I mean? So being able to get a fresh new take on a cool Riddler is Mm -hmm. super exciting to me. You know what I mean? And now like... Yeah, like the movie and the this comic book line up now, but knowing that it's an offshoot of like a main world, Batman, like why not have him have his own origin? Oh, you know yeah. what I mean. And I, think I think they need cool. it. I think it's really cool that an actor that kind of 
from from what I'm seeing, he hasn't really done anything with comic books, and I couldn't find anything. Me neither. Uh, he's he's just been an actor in a couple other films mm-hmm. and stuff. So diving into the Batman has gotten him into wanting to write comic books. Is what I'm kind of seeing from the outside. You know, yeah. whether, rather that this this could have been his goal his whole life. I'm gonna get into the movies and I'm gonna write my book. Right. You yeah. Know? Either but, that or he's always wanted one but never had an outlet. You know what I mean? He's yeah. always wanted to write but never had an outlet. This gives him an outlet and gives him, you know, he got to put his name on the cover and gets a chance to show what he can do. And I think that's great, you know. A hundred percent. Even And when I was kind of like trying to do a quick Google search, trying to find other things that he could have write, written, um, what I was actually kind of finding is somehow, some way, he's on some sources, he's given writers credits for the Batman. Okay. So I don't know. I don't, you know. Well, I'd imagine that the character that he played was very heavily influenced by his choices. Probably. I mean, he could have just straight up written that whole character. They could have, you know, Mm -hmm. we saw what you did in this movie and we want you to make another character like that. Can you do it? Yeah, sure. Here's my idea. You know, but I, I think that that kind of stuff is super cool, especially like I would love to be able to just work with the team and and write a comic book, get alone. Um, my own take on one of my favorite yeah yeah you know, i mean heroes or villains especially because he had to when you're an actor you dive into these these roles to the point where you don't break character when you leave set sometimes mm-hmm. you know and you go home still in character right and and like who else is gonna know the riddler better and probably know some kind of origin story in their head like you have to know that that background and and if you're playing a different style riddler you have to kind of make up one in your right, head right. to to have whatever kind of trauma or pain i think was uh caused is what is being told in the synopsis by his, his dad and by his um i guess he was like adopted and stuff mm-hmm. like that so he was i i um well it sounds like there he's bringing some inspiration from the old origins just modernizing it a little bit. Yeah. And I think that's something this character definitely needed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like you said, we're, we're getting super, like, Jim Carrey, I think, was the last Riddler that we saw on the screen before, besides Gotham. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think of one besides Gotham, and I can't. The Gotham one was really good, too, mm-hmm. but it was totally... Yeah. Jim Carrey was straight up out of the pages of a comic book. Yeah. You know, like that, it's not meant, you know, even... Uh, Harvey Dent in that one, Two Face, mm-hmm. is meant to look like the comic book. You know, his face doesn't quite look like it was actually burned. In right, the Dark right. Knight, it looked like it was actually burned. You know, mm-hmm. type of thing. So, more comic book. I don't know, esque yeah. vibe. <laughs> you yeah. know, from those characters. So it's, it's. I like the the modern take on um, a lot of these classic characters, and I think the one that did it first goes back to the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. When they did a, when they first did a modern character like that, like let's retell the Joker on what he would be like today, not yeah. not Jack Nicholson playing the '50s '60s Joker, because they they didn't do they didn't do a Riddler in that trilogy, right? In what? In the trilogy, uh, like the Dark Knight trilogy, the Christian Bale trilogy. I don't think so. I don't think they, they had Bane. They had uh, Joker, Two Face. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they didn't have like Poison Ivy or Harley Quinn or no. I can't remember who was what was the villain from the first one. The first the Dark Knight. F- the first, the first Christian Bale Batman. That's that's Heath Ledger. That's the Joker. Oh no! There, yeah, there's Batman. Batman Be- Begins. Um, well, he gets trained by Ra's al Ghul. I always forget the yeah. ending. I feel like I fall asleep halfway <laughs> through because I mean, not that it wasn't that good, but I don't think it was comparison Riddler, to the Dark Knight. I always feel like the Dark Knight is the start of it. Yeah, yeah. and and Dark Knight Rises is the sequel, and Batman Begins is kind of just yeah, it's there, you know. But. I uh, <laughs> I have to, yeah, I th- I thought like. I feel like the first one, Ra's al Ghul was involved, and then Batman was almost his own villain trying to become Batman. I don't know. Like, I don't recall it as well. I guess I'll have to rewatch it and see. I think it's it's mainly the origin story and him just kind of taking that down. I don't remember like our super main character, yeah. like being the villain. I just remember him taking down all these thugs and the cops wanting him for being, you know, yeah. a vigilante and all this other stuff. Well. 
with that, let's let's finish up our poll list. Let's get into it and tell you what we're looking at this week. Let's dive in. Explosions. Getting into our poll list this week, we got four books that we're definitely looking at. Some cool stuff coming out this week. I know you got book number one. Let's hear about it. Book number one is, of course, Riddler Year One, issue number four. We're diving in to um, Edward's backstory and his past. This is going to be tying into the Batman film, as you guys heard us talking about earlier. If you haven't listened to the podcast and you're just watching the poll list, you can definitely check out more in the podcast where we covered more about this. It's being written by, um, oh, now I'm going to forget his name. Paul Dano. Paul Dano. It's being written by Paul Dano, who did play the Riddler in uh, Robert Pattinson's uh, Batman to, to be getting a, an origin story on that modern take of an old character. Definitely. So I'm super pumped about it. Book number two is going to be Unstoppable Doom Patrol number two. I didn't know they came out with a new series, a new, yeah, series. Uh, it's not being written by Gerard Way from My Chemical Romance. Okay. So he's busy. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> you know, busy. I really did like Umbrella Academy. I like what he did with Umbrella Academy. So I picked up a Doom Patrol uh, trade that he wrote thinking like I would really like it because I, I do like the, the TV show. I didn't know a lot about the Doom Patrol before that. I like Umbrella Academy. So what's better than Gerard Way writing Doom Patrol? But I really didn't. I didn't care for how he wrote it too much. Okay. And this is not being written by him. And it's a new take on the Doom Patrol. They do have some cool variants with this one as well. So there we go. Everything's super, super cool. Just like when you guys decide to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on. So y'all ain't missing out on any podcast. They come out every single Wednesday. We got new videos every Monday and Friday as well. So make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn that notification bell on. Because book number four three three <laughs> i usually i th- i don't know yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. book number three <laughs> you usually do two and four i, I usually I do. do one and three but that being said if you don't have subscriptions and stuff turned on yet we have a really dope podcast from last week if you're just watching our pull list and not our po- our podcast we interviewed the dudes from selling superman yeah. the documentary coming out hopefully in 2024 uh super it was a great conversation go check it out yeah super great time met some really great people definitely worth waiting for oh yeah a little bit of like an extra long episode there we usually go for about an hour this this episode's gonna go for an hour and a half but man it is packed oh yeah yeah yeah. crazy information and crazy conversations yes Book number three. Book number three <laughs> is Mary Jane Black Cat issue number five right here. Apparently, they are still having issues getting along and 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 figuring out this this problem that Peter has gotten them uh, into. You know, so what, what's what's better than a, a black cat Mary Jane cat fight? Yeah, yeah. You know, so <laughs> I'm here for it. Me too. I think we're all here for There's it. Super cool covers on these as well. Like yep. the covers are always cool on mm-hmm. these. It makes me wonder when we're gonna finally get a black cat into the MCU. Book number four is gonna be a real dope book. It's gonna be Star Wars, Darth Vader, Black, White, and Red, number one. So coming off of success that they've had with other black, white, and red series that they've used in Marvel, they're bringing it into Star Wars. And Peach Momoka is all over this one. She's writing. She's on the writing team. She's on the art oh, team. Dang. She's doing variants for this one. And you know, it said that it's it's a it's a it's a take. It's a take on Darth Vader that only this artist could do. You know what I mean? And it's, it's going to be in her style. It seems like. And I'm, you know, Peach Momoka, Darth Vader, Star Wars, dope. I'm here for it. Right. You know, there's going to be a bunch of variants for this one. (laughs) I can only imagine. So I'm super pumped. Yeah, I love Darth Vader, and Darth Vader's look is super cool, but it's been the same for so long. You know, it's very rigid, very, 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 like, sharp, you know? Yeah, it makes me wonder if the whole book is going to be like that or if it's just some of the covers that are Yeah, I mean, she is on the art team for the book, Mm -hmm. so we'll have to see what the inside pages bring us, you know? So... Super cool book this week. I know we've talked about Peach Momoko a few times on this podcast. Yeah, she's popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So great. I think that about wraps up our (laughs) pull list for this week, guys. Make sure you guys hit that like button and smash that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on any of these future podcast videos. None of it. 
We always got the uh, links in the description. You can check out that free $10 on whatnot when you use that uh, link to sign up. You can get $10 towards your first purchase. You can also get 10% off using code Collective Comics on W.GG. Yes, and until next time, this has been Collective Comics. Thank mm-hmm. you.